This is part 140 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss implementing a search web page using ASP.NET and Dynamic SQL. In our previous video, in part 139, we discussed implementing a search web page using ASP.NET and stored procedure. Let's rewrite that same example using Dynamic SQL instead of a stored procedure. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's add a new web form to our project. So I'm going to right click on the project name, add, and we want to add a web form. Let's name our web form search page with dynamic SQL. And I'm going to copy the HTML that we have on the other page. So let's go to the search page without dynamic SQL, which we implemented in our previous video. And let's copy the entire HTML and paste that on the page that we have just created. So I'm going to replace this HTML with the HTML that we have copied from the other page. So this is going to give us the same look and feel that we have on the other page. Now let's implement the code behind page. Let's double click on the button control to generate the click event handler. We need some ADO.NET namespaces. Let's copy them over from the other page. We need these three namespaces. Let's copy them and paste them right here. In addition to these three namespaces, we also need system.text namespace. This namespace has got a class called string builder, which we are going to make use of to build our SQL statement dynamically. And I'm also going to copy the code that we have in the search button click event handler. So let's copy all this code and paste it within the search button click event handler of the page that we have just created. We'll then change the bits that are required to build our dynamic SQL statement. Now, some of the code is going to stay as is. So we are still going to read the connection string from a web.config file. Using that connection string, we are going to build a SQL connection object, and then we are creating a SQL command object. To that command object, we are associating this connection object using the connection property of the command object. We're not going to make use of this SP search employee stored procedure. So I'm going to delete these two lines of code from here. Instead, we are going to make use of string builder class. And the string builder class is present in system.text namespace. Let's call the instance SP command equals new string builder. And our base query is going to be select star from employees. I'm also going to include the where clause and use this condition, 1 equals 1. There is a reason for using this condition, 1 equals 1. I'll explain that in just a bit. So that's our base query, just in case if the user has not provided a value for any of these search filters, then our query is going to be select star from employees where 1 equals 1, which is going to retrieve all the rows and columns. In case if a user has provided a value for the first name filter, then it's going to come inside this if block. And in here, we will add the and class dynamically. So to the SP command object, we are going to append some text. And that's going to be and first name equals at first name. Make sure you have a single space here. Otherwise, you would get a syntax error. Notice here we have got a parameter in the query at first name. And next, we are creating a SQL parameter object with that name. And the value for that parameter is coming from the first name text box. And then we are associating the parameter object to the command object. Let's do the same thing with the other search filters that we have. So if a user has entered a value for the last name filter, then we want to dynamically add a condition and last name equals at last name. Let's do the same thing with gender. And gender equals at gender. And finally, the same thing for salary. And salary equals at salary. So we have built our dynamic SQL statement. This 
SB command object has our dynamic SQL statement depending on for which search filters the user has provided values. Now we need to associate this dynamic SQL statement with the command object. So to do that, let's use the command text property command text equals sb command object dot to string. So whatever we have in our sb command object that is set as the value for the command text property and you know we know that this is not a stored procedure so command object dot command type equals command type dot text and then we open the connection execute the command and whatever result we get in the data reader we're going to set that as the data source for the grid view and call the data bind method so with all these changes let's run our project by pressing control F5 and quickly test this page to make sure it works as expected notice we have not provided values for any of the search filters when we click the search button we get the list of all employees as expected now let's set the gender filter to female and when we click the search button we only get female employees so this page is working as expected now let's understand the reason for this condition where one equals one let's remove that for a minute now the confusion is should these filters start with where or and now let's say this filter is going to start with where first name is the first filter on the page so for example if a user has supplied a value for this filter then we don't have a problem the query will be select star from employees where first name equals at first name so everything is going to work as expected but imagine if the user has not provided a value for the first name filter but he has provided a value for the last name filter in this case the query is going to be select star from employees and last name equals at last name so we have a syntax error there it's going to fail now the confusion here is to start these filters with where clause or and keyword on the other hand if we have the where clause in the base query where 1 equals 1 then we know for sure this query contains a where clause so all the other filters can be appended using the AND keyword that makes our code a lot easier to write if we don't have this condition here then every time we add these filters we will have to check okay does the query contain where clause if so append the filter using AND keyword if not add where clause so we have to do that for every filter that we append and if we have 20 such filters we have to do that check 20 times so that makes our code difficult to write and maintain as well so to keep things simple I have included this condition where 1 equals 1 now let's fire up SQL Server Profiler and see how this dynamic SQL statement is executed at SQL Server so let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio click on Tools SQL Server Profiler let's connect to my local SQL Server instance on this trace properties window I'm going to leave all the defaults and click the run button so we have our SQL Server trace running here let's clear this existing trace information and then issue a request from our web page let's change the gender filter to male click the search button we have the matching records and look at what we have captured in SQL Server profiler Look at the dynamic SQL statement select star from employees where 1 equals 1 and gender equals at gender and the value for this gender parameter is male and this dynamic SQL statement is executed using SP underscore execute SQL system store procedure now let's include another filter in addition to gender filter let's also set first name filter and execute it we get the matching record and notice within SQL Server Profiler, in addition to the gender filter, we also have the first name filter and the value for first name filter is mark. And this dynamic SQL statement is still executed using our system store procedure, SP underscore execute SQL. In our previous video, we have implemented the same search page using our custom store procedure, SP search employees. So let's navigate to that page and let's issue a request and look at what we have captured in SQL Server Profiler so here it is using our custom stored procedure SP search employees
So in our next video, we'll discuss the differences between using dynamic SQL and stored procedures. There are several differences both in terms of performance and security which we'll talk in detail. On this slide right here, we have the ADO.NET code that we have used to build our dynamic SQL statement. Thank you for listening and have a great day.